So let's take our Bibles tonight and turn to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. And we are looking at the signs of the second coming of the Lord Jesus. And tonight, beginning in verse 29 of chapter 24, Jesus moves away from talking about the sequence of events. He's been talking about the sequence of events that will occur uh, after the tribulation and prior to the tribulation. And you remember we've looked at these signs of confusion and conflict and catastrophe and condemnation. And now he stops talking about the sequence of events and he begins tonight in these verses by giving us some additional insight about some things that we can look for. Some things that are going to unfold. And we pick it up tonight in verse 29 of chapter 24 as we stand together to honor the Lord and to thank Him for His Word. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Father, tonight we can see in our mind what we have just read in your word and we thank you that there is a day coming that is certain and not too long off when the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise and then those of us who are alive will be caught up to meet you in the air we thank you for that blessed assurance that we have as believers tonight that though this world may swing beneath our feet we need not fear because our eyes are fixed and our hearts are focused, Lord Jesus, upon you. And we praise you that that day is soon to come. And we pray tonight as you teach us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, in your word, that you would help us to understand these things that you spoke to your disciples long ago, these signs of the second coming. Father, I pray that you would bless every person in this room. I ask you to bless those that will see this message on television. I pray, Father, that you will place upon us the urgency of the hour in which we live, that we may work while the fields are white into harvest before it's too late. And Father, tonight, if there is one in this room without you, may you impress upon that one the need to be saved. For, Father, summer is over. The harvest is gathered, and still some are left to be saved. Teach us from your word in Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. There are some things in these three verses that Jesus says about the period of time on the heels of the tribulation period. Look at verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days. So fix this in your mind. We've studied already the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church when we will be called up to meet Jesus in the air. That will be followed by a seven-year period of tribulation where God unleashes His wrath and judgment on the earth. The final three and a half years of that seven-year period will increase in intensity it is known as the Great Tribulation. During those seven years, the saints of God will be gathered in heaven and we will be judged during that period of time for our rewards. And while we're being judged for our rewards, all hell breaks loose on earth. As the Holy Spirit is taken away, there's no restraint. Sin runs rampant and God judges the people that are lost. Then immediately following the tribulation, there is the second coming of Jesus Christ that takes place. And right before that second coming, here are some things we notice. Look at verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, 
the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. That's the scene in the heavens. Jesus speaks here about the scene in the heavens. He's unfolding this situation for his appearance. The Bible says Jesus is the creator. He created everything that has been made. And now the one who created it all describes vividly for his disciples a time when creation, his creation, will disintegrate. He made it by his word, and at his word it will disintegrate. And this disintegration of the universe will occur immediately after the seven-year period of tribulation, right before the second coming of Christ. The Bible says the sun and the moon will cease to give their light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Keep your place here and turn over to the Gospel of Luke for a moment. And let's read about what Luke said about this event or what he recorded that Jesus had to say about it. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 and 26. And we're going to be looking tonight at several passages of scripture in the New Testament and the Old Testament, particularly some of the prophets. So I hope you'll take a Bible and follow along. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on earth distress of the nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. God says it will be so horrifying in those days that people will literally die out of fear, die because they are afraid. No natural disaster on this earth that we have experienced or will experience can compare to the horribleness of what is going to happen when God begins to unleash his wrath upon this earth during the tribulation. Think about this. The sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. It's interesting to note as you study the word of God, darkness in the Bible often accompanied serious events. At the crucifixion of Jesus, the world became dark at midday. When God judged Egypt, there was blackness of night in the daytime. And in Joel, in the Old Testament, chapter 2, verse 10, the Old Testament prophet said, The earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble, the sun and moon grow dark, and the stars diminish their brightness. Zephaniah the prophet describes it in his prophecy in Zephaniah 1.15. He wrote, A day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. I can't imagine what that will be like. Dark all the time. No light upon the earth. Completely dark. You can go to Alaska and it's dark for a long period of time. And people who live there have a tendency to get cabin fever. It can be very depressing for the people who live in total darkness. Can you imagine how awful it's going to be when the Lord turns the lights out on planet Earth and everybody will live in total darkness? These astronomical events will be set into motion. There will be a time of upheaval on the Earth unlike anything humans have ever experienced. And these days of darkness are a reminder of the judgment of God. I'll tell you something. If I was not saved tonight, I'd run to this altar and repent and get saved. I don't want to be around when this stuff starts. Do you? I mean, Jesus is making a way for you to be saved. Verse 29 tells us that four things will happen in rapid succession at the end of the seven-year period. The sun will go dark. The moon will go dark because it is affected by the sun. The stars will fall, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Look at that phrase, the powers of the heavens. That refers to the force of energy in the universe that holds everything together. The Lord's going to let go of it, and there will be instantaneous chaos on the earth. Turn over to Isaiah in the Old Testament. 
And I want you to see where the Old Testament prophet Isaiah predicted this seven centuries before Jesus was ever born. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah 13, beginning in verse 6. Listen carefully to the words of this prophet. Seven centuries before Christ was born. He wrote, well, verse 6, well, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt and they will be afraid. Pangs and sorrows will take hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth. And the moon will not cause its light to shine. There it is, this prophecy of Isaiah. That, by the way, is a twofold prophecy. That prophecy applied to the destruction of Babylon that occurred in 539 BC, but it also applies to this time that Jesus is teaching about in Matthew chapter 24 and in the Revelation. The devastation of ancient Babylon, if you study it, it was simply a microcosm of what is going to happen to the entire universe during the end time. We see the scene in the heavens. But then look at verse 30, and we see the sign in the heavens in verse 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now go back in our text to verse 3. And you see in that third verse, one of the questions the disciples ask him, what will be the sign of your coming? And the second question, and of the end of the age. Now in verse 30, look at what Jesus said in response. He said, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. The disciples said, Jesus, what will be the sign? Jesus said, the sign is you will see me appear in heaven. Jesus is the sign. He said, you will see me appear in heaven. That will be the sign. The sign is Christ himself. The sign is the Son of God himself appearing in the heavens. Now remember, the whole world is dark, completely dark, no light anywhere. And that darkness becomes the backdrop for the Son of God and the Shekinah glory of God coming in all of his power and all of his glory. And the word glory there is translated from the word doxa. It means splendor, magnificence, brightness. Here we are and the whole world is dark. And in a second of time, it is flooded with the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the sign of the second coming. The sign in the heavens. Revelation 6. Turn there for a moment. It tells us something about this and what it will be like the last book in the new testament the revelation chapter 6 verses 15 and 16 this day will be so unbearable that wicked men will cry for rocks to fall on them to hide themselves from the presence of holy god look at verse 15 revelation 6 and the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Isn't this amazing? The wickedness of man. But it's even worse than that. If you turn to Revelation chapter 16, we don't have time to look at it, but Revelation 16 says that men in that day will actually clench their fist and blaspheme and curse God during these final days on earth. 